This is KTN News. I, I placed the kibagi at the back seat, and one of the guards was holding him, and then the driver. So we were three, the driver and one of the guards and myself. I sat in the front seat for communication purposes as Kibaki was sitting behind me. So one of the guards um, advised me that there could be a telephone number in the glove compartment of the vehicle. And uh, sure enough, when I opened it, I found a number of uh, telephone number and I called them I explained to them that uh, I am with the, our presidential candidate he has been involved in an accident and uh, therefore I need an ambulance quickly well first I want to say that there was no uh, uh, adequate network communication the network was not there so it was just cutting, cutting as we, disconnecting as we were talking. Now, the ambulance, Amref ambulance told me that they will not be there um, before 30 minutes. They said they can only be there within 30 minutes. And so I told them that I could not wait. I was going to drive on with my uh, patient until we meet. So we agreed, okay, drive on, we drive on, we meet have we, or something like that. Former senator, who was now in charge of Kibaki's rescue mission, was given strict instructions by AMREF doctors to keep engaging the victim. They advised me to talk to Kibaki continuously to avoid uh, him getting into shock. So that was my preoccupation of engaging, talking to him about uh, things, assuring him, I remember telling him that, um, you know, we have done a lot of work uh, and we have very short time remaining uh, before you become president and therefore we, I don't believe God can allow anything bad to happen, so keep on, we are going to get there. So I kept on assuring him, assuring him when we reached at the river, the network communication had improved greatly. Kibaki asked me to inform his son David. David had been with us in Kitui. He was far, far behind. So in a nice manner, I told him Mze had been uh, involved in an accident, but it's okay. Follow us. We are going to Nairobi Hospital. He also asked me to call uh, Dr. Gikonyo. He's a personal physician, and they inform him. I talked to Gikonyo, and he told me that uh, they would be waiting for us so we drove on to the uh, accident uh, casualty area, and uh, I was delighted to see two lines. One line led by Dr. Gikonyo with a team of doctors, another line led by Moody Awori and Raila Odinga. I don't know how Raila managed to overtake us because I left him behind, but there was Raila. Uh, with the NAC team waiting for us. And um, now you came back. Dr. Dan Gikonyo, a cardiologist, was then a consultant at Nairobi Hospital and also family doctor to the Kibakis. So we took him in a wheelchair, brought him into the, in the hospital and we did all the necessary scans and we were able to establish all the various injuries. And this could be, it was, now it was getting dark. And there was a media there, and they expected us to explain to them in detail uh, what had happened. He has not suffered any major injuries. He's fully conscious. He's aware of what's going on. He hasn't had any major injuries to his head or chest. He unfortunately has had a, a fracture of the upper right arm and a dislocation of the right ankle. Wambugu says he regained his consciousness several hours later while in Nairobi hospital. Nilikuwa bado na ushughumi kwa mwili na nikasema hata kuona nikauliza kama mzee ako hai. Ndio nikaambiwa ako hai. So nikasema nitaka kudhibitisha kama ako hai. So nikapelekwa na trolley 
kwa trolley mpaka pale alikuwa Kibaki had suffered a fractured right arm dislocated ankle and injured neck which sent the opposition into a panic mode he was flown to west london's north wellington hospital for specialized treatment the difficult bit actually was the flight to england because here we are we are we are here with a very important client who is injured and we have to travel with him uh, uh, to england and we didn't have our own control. You know, when you're not the president, you can't say how to travel. So we are traveling as lay people. And I remember asking for some seats in Kenya Airways. And the Kenya Airways people, I must say, they were not very cooperative. You know, remember you see you had a, an old government, and you were the new government challenging the old government. They were not very cooperative. And they, they gave us three seats at the back of the plane. And I remember uh, Honorable Raira Odinga, who was with us in that movement, I said, no, we cannot put our, pres our president in the back of the plane. We must put him in first class. And uh, when we got there, they, the Kenya demanded that we then, if you're going to go to first class, we must pay. And I remember all this was done by Raira Odinga. Uh, and he, he was there and he said, if you're going to pay, we are going to pay and we must get seats on the front of the plane. The difficult thing was how to get a stretcher onto the front of the plane. The aisle is not wide enough to carry a stretcher. And I still remember, I, I, I have a lot of respect for Raira. He came with some young men, about eight or nine of them, and they carried that stretcher across that aisle to the front on their knees. They went on their knees, they carried the stretcher up on their hands, and on their knees they went from the entrance to the front seat of the plane. I've never forgotten. We were able to, to place the, 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 the oncoming president in a comfortable position in first class, and then we traveled to England. They say when it rains, it pours. As the main opposition presidential candidate continuing receiving treatment, and with the 2002 general election in less than two weeks' time, his running mate Kijana Wamalwa was also taken ill, and they had to be admitted in the same hospital in London, causing more panic and political tension among their supporters back home in Kenya. Uh, we received call that uh, the then to be vice president, Honorable Wamalwa, had come for a conference and was taken ill in his hotel. So because you are already in this hospital, we were able to bring him over to the same hotel, uh, to the same hospital, and uh, he was also hospital at the same time. I can remember President Moy coming to visit uh, uh, us uh, in Wellington on his way. I think he had traveled to the U.S. and he passed by and came to say Paul to the to Moi Kebake and uh, Omalo at the same time. Mm. The remainder of his presidential campaign was conducted by Kijana Wamalwa, NAC's vice president designate, and Raila Odinga. Come December 27, 2002, Kibaki won the presidential election with a decisive landslide victory, garnering 62%, over Kanu Zuhuru Kenyatta, who got 31%, and was sworn into office while on a wheelchair. Mimi mwai kibaki na hapa kwamba nitatenda kazi zangu za urais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya kwa uaminifu na kutimiza wajibu wa kazi hizo ewe Mwenyezi Mungu unisaidie. So the swearing in was very interesting also because we weren't quite sure that it was going to be sworn in or not. There was rumors it would be postponed, there was what. So uh, the political side decided it was going to go on, and uh, I was tasked with the job of making sure that we get the president-elect to Uhuru Park. It's a lot of suspicions. So I was told 
uh, by the people in the in the know, you must stick by him all the time. The plan was that when we got to to the park, we would hand him over to the military and they would take him to the days. But you know, I was instructed, you must not let go of that wheelchair. You must stick by him. It doesn't matter who comes for it, you must go there and you must be there. So I held onto the wheelchair and we, and, to, and we got the days and I s sat there next to him continuously. Uh, because we, we had to make sure nothing went wrong. David Wambugu remembers with nostalgia how the 2002 campaigns fared on. He knew his lifestyle would change having joined the GSU in 1992 before joining Kibaki Security Detail in 1997. A man who was a heartbeat away to clinching the presidency after two previous attempts. So, Mzee alikuwa mashagamuka sana. Kwa wapu kampenya yake ikuwa juu. Na sasa kulikuwa, upepo venye ilikuwa, ilikuwa sasa di anakuja kuwin election. So, hata sisi tulikuwa contented ya dani yetu. Ya kwa basa yule Mzee tumeshuga yu muda yote, atashukua kiti, na kishukua kiti, maisha yetu itabadilika. So, si kujua, kama hiyo accident, italibu maisha yagu forever. However, for Corporal Wambugu, the accident marked the beginning of a chain of tribulations. Ile majirani nilipata ni ya mugu. Nikafujika mugu. Kutoka hapo nilikuwa ni megogwa mugogwa sana. Alafu kichwa. Before that accident, I was not a, a stammerer. Niliaza kustama kutoka, kutoka na, iwa, na iwa jari. Nilikuwa na ugeaga fluently. Lakini kutoka iwa kati hizo effect, nikaza kustama. Yeah. So to date, I've, I've been having intermittent, intermittent health problems. He alleges that powerful individuals within government forced him out of work. I've thought it wise to give you a safer riding instead of a blanket sack. Here is a retirement letter that I've drafted for you. Sign below here if you want peace. I have said retirement is not a retirement. I have said that I have a he wrote a complaint later to then police commissioner Major General Retired Hussein Ali and he says Ali did not respond. He wrote a second letter to the National Police Service Commission Chair Johnston Kavuludi and copy to the Director of Public Prosecutions, the Ombudsman, Attorney General and the Independent Police Oversight Authority. They moved swiftly by writing demand letters to know what happened, but they also did not get responses. IPOA has sent four reminders until to date, same to the DPP and the Ombudsman. Still, no feedback. His advocate advised that they move to Court of Labor and Employment Relations Court. Wheels of justice are yet to begin rolling. Ni kama kulikuwa na some interference, iliko interferences, kuko kutini. Tukakojia tupewe siku, hatu kupewa. Ilibida ika mwisho, ni adikeji for justice. The letter is here, ni adikeji for justice. Tukapewa mention ala karaka. Kupewa mention, tukaeda kutini, ikuwa iyo case, ikuna lady justice wa silwa. Na akaoda, akaoda, iyo case imeka sana, itafutiwe hearing date. So kutoka wakati huo, hearing date badwa hija peanoa. So I'm still suspecting interference in the court process. Both retired President Kibaki and Wambugu are from Othaya, neighboring villages of Iriaini and Karima. After the accident, kwa sababu maybe ya, ya protocol, si kweza kumpata tena kutoka the, 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 the time of the, of the accident. Si jaweza kumpata. So in mebida ikamwisho, ni miadika balua, ni miadikia uh, head of state, President Fufu Kenyatta. Head of civil service. Mr. Joseph Kenywa, Nimiadikia status controller, that is uh, Bogu, uh, Mr. Bogwa. For now, David Wambugu is still seeking what he calls denied 
and elusive justice. Duncan Hember, The Untold Story.